this is, of course, we're looking at the section of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're all familiar with that, but it's just fun to see how small of an area it covers. And these, uh, so what we're looking at is uh, the Fraunhofer lines, the absorption lines, and these are some that represent some of the elements. I have a chart that you had a question which uh, later indicated what element I could tell you. So we're fairly familiar with uh, what part of the spectrum we enjoy looking at with the solar telescopes. And who invented the spectroscope? George Hillary Taylor. And he invented it in 1924. He wanted to see the sun in real time. And they used to make spectrographs of the sun, spectrograms, sometimes called. And many of you are probably familiar with the three volumes of the amateur telescope there. And that's where I kind of got the idea I'm interested in maybe building looking at the sun. So this was uh, an illustration in the book. And George Willie Hale had this, I think this is probably his first design, and he used oscillating oscillating slits that went back and forth. He had a sealer staff this in. He had it in a, a garage actually and he had a lens that light went from the sealer staff through an entrance slit over here and down uh, to a mirror, then back to the grating, back to the other mirror and came back through the entrance slit. It's this, goes back to it's this mirror, and goes through the lens, and it's focused, the image is focused on the entrance slit. Same thing happens with this one, basically, except it's an all mirror system. And this is a top view, you see if you kind of see the light back through the top view. This is the sealer stat arrangement outside this garage. Now, can I remember how this looks? If you're going to see it again, but this is how it looked at the time he was used to answer. Okay, I already mentioned I read about Spectre Glacier in the book, but the way it used large cement piers and all the heavy structure to, to keep it uh, from vibrating or to keep it, everything in line it seemed kind of difficult. I met Fred in the early 80s with the Star Party. And I mentioned this to him, and then he started talking about spectroheliscopes. He had written a book on spectroheliscopes. So this is Fred on the right, and I'm on the left. And I've had it together for a while, and we would set it up in my backyard, and Fred would come down, and we'd look through it, and he would take notes. I'm not a very good scientist as far as reporting things, usually for later, but he is. He was good at that. And then he kept finding more things that we could search for with this instrument because it had such a good dispersion of the spectrum. You could see some detail in the spectral lines. This is the current light path of this instrument. So we have the sun up here. This is a sealer staff that has two mirrors. This mirror rotates once every 48 hours. When you reflect an object onto another mirror, and you move the mirror that's reflecting the object onto it. This, the light moves, or the image moves twice the speed that you move this. So you have to gear it down. Yeah. We can't see you pointing at the screen at the point of that screen. Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you. I'll have an amateur with this. Thank you. Okay. And then, uh, and I didn't move this down here, but then the light from the second mirror goes to the telescope mirror, which was here. The light from the telescope mirror comes down, and it goes into this diagonal. And from there, it goes down inside the box. It hits the mirror that's on aluminum plate. The aluminum plate has two mirrors on it, that's long. And the light goes down, hits this mirror, and then it goes that way. And it goes into an entrance slip, which 
which you can see here. At the back of the box, down at that far end inside, is an 8 inch diameter mirror. It's an F11. It used to go to a sheep speedway telescope. A friend of mine gave it to me. That's lost. Okay, that's an 8 inch mirror, and in front of it is a mask. And the mask has two circular holes in it. So it acts like two mirrors. So the light hits the nodding mirror, goes to the engine slip, hits this side. And it comes back down the box as parallel light. It's not focused light, it's just parallel. And it hits the diffraction grade. This is a diffraction grade. It has 1200 lines uh, per millimeter, it's a two inch square. And then it goes back to the other side of the mirror. It goes on that side, and it's still parallel light. Then it comes back through either an exit slip or just an opening. And I'll show you how that works here, but it goes through now. If I have the exit slit there, I would use this instrument to look at the disk of the sun. I could move the exit slit out of the way, and I could look at the spectrum of the sun. I'll explain later how that works. Let's see. Well, then the other piece arrangement I have here, it's a 45 degree uh, prism arrangement. I guess they call it a directing prism. But I had a little objective uh, lenses on either side to make like a relay lens to get the image from the slip up through the optics so you can see it. The image is actually about eight inches away. So I have to focus to that distance. And the eye relief was so great that I had to make an extension with a round hole in it so you get your eye in the right spot, otherwise you have a hard time getting your eye in the very really distance. Go on. I have some videos here I'm going to show you. I had a simple little heliostat here. In fact, it's the mirror that's inside this now. I had it illuminized. A friend of mine gave it, gave it to me. This is about a three and a quarter lens that I had. It was an F12 uh, refractor. This is the first design, just to see if it was going to work. I wasn't really sure. Of course, Fred was helping me with it also. Okay, these are. Um, I just had it set up in the backyard with one of the stands that you see here, just the bench and some wood all the way up. And you can see how small the diagonal was that goes down inside of here. <laughs> this looks like a stove pipe. But I was having a hard time focusing on it, so I was just I'm not an up to op optical person, so I was experimenting. And then I had, uh, for tilling the diffraction grade, I used a micrometer. As you can see a little housing here. I have some more pictures of it. Anyway, this is oh, and you see right here, that's the disk of the sun. It's about three eighths of an inch in diameter because the focal length of the lens is uh, not very long. Okay, this is the side view. And here you can see the where I tilted the diffraction grade. There is an arm that went down in here and tilted it. So these are the early stages, and this is an electric core that went in to operate the naughty mirrors. We'll get there. This is another picture. I had a handle on it. And the wood wasn't cut. You can see how I had the wood cut back on this one. So I made modifications over the years. And I just ended up, I don't think you probably go through this again with the sun bits that it goes through here. It goes down through the day and all. To the entrance. So, so I have to make, do this fairly quick. Okay, this is the nodding mirror synthesizer. So, this is the aluminum plate, and this is an elliptical mirror like you use in the day, you know, that's what they are. And I drilled, made some holes in it to make it lighter. I put some weight up here to balance it. This is an arm that comes out, and this is just an electric motor, and I made an eccentric wheel. And I use an old set of ignition points uh, that have fiber on it to ride up and down on this wheel. So this only moves maybe an eighth of an inch one way or the other. And so it's, it's making the beam move back and forth over the entrance. So this is for running it to, uh, to see the disk of the sun. And this is a close-up of the, of the wheel. I drilled some holes in it because more of the bell was on that side. I wanted it to be somewhat balanced. So I did that, I put a great big capacitor on it. 
he was a librarian uh, who got me to there and we keep it last longer. And it's just spring that holds it down. I was able to make some adjustments here. You have to make everything adjustable. This is how it looks inside the box. So this is the light comes down, hits that, goes to the entrance. So on that side's the uh, the diagonal mirror where the light comes out of the that's the entrance, comes out of the exit so uh, into the other piece. This is a great big piece of steel. I was worried about vibration. It's rubber biscuits and stuff to keep the vibration down. But that hasn't been an issue. Okay, now this is when somebody used to kid me about this. What do you cook? Okay, it's almost done. But I, you have to get to everything and you have to make adjustments. And so those are just access points. But I made the, well, you'll see better, you'll see better pictures of this. But I made the adjustable slits, made them out of a stainless steel. This is looking inside. I used to have what was called an image shifter, it's just a piece of glass. But it acted, it, it allowed you to bend the light a little bit when you turned it. But I had a halo step and it didn't always track uh, real good. So this allowed you to try to keep the, what you're looking at in view a little bit longer. Then I have a red filter over here because some of the uh, diffraction grading has different, uh, uh, they have overlapping of different orders, first order, second order, third order. So first order spreads out so far, second order about twice as far. But there's some overlap. So this took care of the overlap of hydrogen alpha. Well, that's going up to the eyepiece there, and then coming down would be uh, going into the diagonal. But you can kind of see how it looks inside. This is a close-up of the exit slip arrangement. And you can see I have a hinge over here. The exit slip system is here. This tapered cone, when you push, when you screw that in there, pushes those two. Uh, things apart and spreads the slits apart like this evenly. You want to, you, you want to keep it, uh, the light all in the same uh, axis. Now, if I wanted to look at the spectrum, I just move that out of the way, like the door. And that was just a little knob to allow me to swing it out of the way. So it was an easy way to put the uh, exit slit in. And this is a, now, this is down at Hale Solar Lab. I said it. Let's see some pictures of that. This is a friend arm case looking at the Ebert mirror that's inside. It's inside that box. <laughs> and then behind it, there's electric motor system. And so you can move it back and forth because you have to focus it sometimes. But using the whole mirror system, everything, you know, all the, the colors of the light are focused in the same place. You don't have chromatic vibration. And then you adjust it. I have another screw down there. It's like you would any mirror or telescope. This is the long box. There's nothing in it. It's just empty. I had to cut it to bring it here so you could see this funny looking little section. I had to cut that much. I cut a section out, then I had to make it so I could put it back in. So I went to a little extra work to, to make it more portable. So I kind of hated cutting through it. That. But it's okay. And this is looking down. I have a. It's looking down. I have a have a baffle here in the center. It doesn't go the whole length of the box. The part of it keeps. And this is a diffraction grade. And this is the older, a little older style. How it, how it rotated. It's still basically the same. But then you have to tilt and move it. That's the exit port. The entrance port is. Over. Okay, the, the door of the exit section is open, so you can see how that looks. Fold it in. This is the seal estab system, uh, like you see it now. And it's only about two years that I've, I've used it. The first year I've used it uh, with it being able to be clamped, probably with that a little better than I had before. Okay, this is the uh, mirror down here. Comes back as the telescope. And I also had made, uh, used plain old concave uh, optics to extend the focal length. Because sometimes I wanted the image of the sun to 
be larger, so the sunspot section would be, you'd be able to get it on the entrance. So I see some detail. I really need to hurry because I have some videos. I want you to see. Then the eye piece of the engine. do. This is Fred Veal over here. I forgot his name. That's Don Nicholson. Don Nicholson's father was Seth Nicholson. Seth Nicholson worked with uh, George Hillary Hale on Sunspot. And Don is now, he was born in 1918, so he's 98 years old. And he's still, still alive. And that's you have to have some electrical power for it. So there's a lot of electric motors that have to be used. Keep going. So, uh, you could, when you move the diffraction gradient, you want to move it slowly uh, so you can get the, the spectral line you want to use to look at this. You want to get it in view. So, I just made a little gear arrangement. And I just, just used a scared arrangement and I used a, just a threading tab and did what they call pop and fed it into the to the tab rotating. I didn't really care how many threads. Just wanted to make it so it would be geared down. And then you can pull it down if you want to move it quickly. This is Fred Vio, Red Riverside. I took him down there one time, so we did that. Uh, he had a chance. He went there many years ago, and it was nice for him to be able to come down again. This is hydrogen alpha. If you look at it visually in person, Looks a little better, but I took this with a just a hand up in color. But everything you see with your eye through this. These are sodium lines, very, very dark, uh, D1, D2. There's some lines. You see a lot of detail in this. It really spreads the spectrum out quite a ways because of the long focal length. This is uh, helium in emission. And to get that, you have to get the disk of the sun, the edge of it, the limb, right on the edge of the slits. Because the helium is in the, in the, uh, in the chromosphere area, I believe us. Those of you that are experts can explain it better. But it's kind of hard to do. And sometimes, when you, especially if you have a small disk on the slit, so this is kind of fun. And they discovered helium on the sun before they did on I have some other videos of the uh, These are magnesium lines down in the green. I put the wavelengths up here and so you can see what they are. This is H beta down in the blue. This is uh, H and K calcium. And you can see how broad the area is. You can see the little bright areas going through. These are sunspots. This horizontal line. You can see the penumbra area, the umbra, and sometimes there'll be uh, light lines going across, could be large hot areas. I can say I have videos. This is a camera that I use to go through this quickly. This is uh, H alpha in the second order. So I was using uh, one of the, the focal extenders. To be able to, to get the sunspot. That's a sunspot going through there, those lines going through here. The hot collage, you can see what it does. It's just going down. But it, it makes openings. And then a lot of times, when you see this angle right here, that's probably a filament. And if it's off, then it's a Doppler shift. If you know how far, you know how far part of an action that is. Then there's formulas you could use to tell the velocity of it. So you see some of the, the dynamics that go on. This is probably done in the year 2000, somewhere around there, when the sun is really active. There's a lot of magnetic areas. Now, I never thought I'd ever see this with this instrument, but that's the Zeeman split. And that's down in the magnesium area, the green area. And I found a line down there that looked really neat, and it's this. You can see how it's bowed out, you can see a little space in between there. And how do you know where you are? Well, you have some charts and things that you could use. This is off the spectrum of the sun. 
And this is the spectrum, but it's overexposed. This is what you see. The hydrogen alpha line is down here. And at the edge of the spectrum, open space, this is coming off. And you can see how it's zigzagging. And when you're moving the image of the sun over the entrance slit, you see this line moving around like a flame. And you'll see parts of it going different directions. And those are delta shifts, so it's, it has velocity in different directions. That's another one coming off the, the spectrum. So you don't need to even have a dining mirror, or you could just see it off the spectrum. Some more, there's quite a Doppler shift here, going way off. I saw one uh, through the eyepiece of the, and it was beyond the field of view. It was a spray, I think, coming off the sun. But here it is on both sides. This is a, sun, a sunspot. This is also another. They're not all the same density, but there's some Ken over here. And a lot of it, the person used a video camera, and so sometimes you could adjust the gain. Correct, but you know, these are the things that happen. This is sodium, but you can see over here a little bright spot. That's where helium is. That's a little bit of helium in the emission. This is just done off a, a monitor. I just put it in there. But look at all the. See that the hydrogen alpha line is not smooth. You see all this jagged stuff on here. That's Doppler shifting. The, the cells, the granulation, rise and falling, rise and falling. And you're seeing this, it looks like a snake when you're moving the, uh, the disk of the sun over the entrance. Like this thing just wiggles, you see dark areas, light areas. It's just, to me, it's pretty exciting because you're watching the physics going on. And I just use a VCR recorder and a little CRT thing, there's a camera there, and I would put it on there. Here's Zeeman split again. Now this is in color. I took it with my handheld camera. I think it's this one. You can see a little bit of green in between. This is a profile chart. So you use charts to tell where you are, uh, to identify the lines in the angstrom. This is a chart that shows the absorption lines. So I have some up here on top of the spectroscope box. This is a book. You could use to, and it tells you what all these lines are, most of them. So if you know where it is on the spectrum, you could look at that and you can tell what it, find out what it is. And this is the favorite line I like to look for here. It really is sensitive to the magnetic field. Here's Don Nicholson, Fred, you're looking through the charts. You could spend all day just looking at one aspect of this. And looking at the spectrum itself and what's going on is fascinating. The disc part is, uh, is interesting too, but I enjoy looking at the spectrum the most. But there's, oh, it's the Venus transit. I just did it for the fun of it. Just a dark line, that's all it is. It goes across the whole spectrum. So, now here's but when the naughty mirror is running, and you have hydrogen alpha behind there, that's what the, what the sun looks like through this instrument. And then you, it's like looking through a door, and you're moving the, the disc, you're moving the disc of the, the image of the disc of the sun on the entrance so behind it. You see the sun is moving behind the door, moving back and down, back and forth. I have some videos of that, so I'm not going to go through this because it's not a very great lesson. I'm not going to do that. Okay, I won't talk during this. I made this last too long. I don't think this is new. Okay, this is calcium. I don't know whether it's H or K calcium. I really can't tell the difference. They're very, they look exactly the same to me when you look through the obvious light difference. But the nodding, you don't see this that way when you're looking. Well, I can't see calcium with uh, H or K with my eyes visually. I can only do it with the camera. Our eyes are not sensitive enough. Maybe a really young person with real good eyes. See that far. The spectroheliostops do not make real bright images while well, they do in the spectrum, but not when you operate it to see the disk. So, what I was doing here was just going over the whole disk of the sun. And I was just doing this for the fun of it for me. I never was planning on showing this to anybody, but since I was asked, Jen invited me to 
come here. So I thought, well, I better do something like this. I had to dig through a bunch of videos, so I did find some that might be suitable. But after a while, I'll change it to hydrogen alpha, and you'll see the difference. And it's, you know, maybe it could be focused there. You know, there's always something you can do to make it better. But this, to be able to do this just mechanically with the same right, you know, nodding back and forth, and what it does is it leaves a latent image in front of your eye, like watching an old uh, movie. And it's actually it's flickering about 30 times a second, but a video, the video cameras aren't synchronized to this, so it's the synchronization that gives this weird uh, kind of appearance to it. So we'll look at these, and if it's taken too long, I could just go to the next one. But this was kind of interesting. Now we're in hydrogen alpha, and that's a filament that's up here, right in there. Very dark, a lot of contrast. You may not see that much contrast visually, but with the camera, you know, you could adjust these things somewhat. And when it starts, sometimes it starts to get synchronized pretty good. And it'll go back and forth slow, but other times it goes different speed. So what I'm doing, I'm using it just to heal us at this stage of the spectral healing stuff. So I reach up and I grab it and I move it around. But that's what this instrument can do. I was looking at a filament yesterday with it when the sun was before the clouds came in. It's supposed to be a portable instrument, but it's almost getting beyond being portable. And it sure keeps keeps me going. You know, I've taken that thing apart and put it back together so many times. And I keep modifying it here and there. And there's so many things you have to think about that might get out of adjustment and some things do. So it took me a while to get it going. It's uh, yeah, astronomy is a fun hobby, I'm sure. <laughs> it gets to you. I never thought I would get so involved. And now, that's a prominence. Did you see that little part up there? Yeah. So, you know, if you overexpose the sun, then you can start seeing some of these prominences. But to, to tune that, you know, what's going on is you close the exit slit, and it has a small opening, and you put the, uh, the line that you want to look at, like the hydrogen alpha line, and you get that in the center, you close the little door, and you want it to be right over that line. Uh, if it's not, that's okay. Then you could adjust, turn the little knob down there. When it's on band, it'll just pop in front of your face, and it'll, you'll see it. Okay, this is, I'm just, look. now this is, what happened, this is what it looks like when you're looking at the spectrum live. Now this is a second order, and this is a sunspot going through. I'm moving the disk of the sun around on the entrance slip. You can see how it's distorting the lines. You'll see some Doppler shift. You'll see little dark areas going up and down, probably filaments on the sun, dark areas. And, you can, and you'll see the kind of the lighter part, the kind of, you'll see some kind of light color stuff going on through here. So there's some plage and stuff around the sunspots. You'll see it, you saw it get bright a few times in there. You can see how it wiggles around. You can see all this going on. When I was doing this, I had to have the red filter on it because I'm in the second order just over there. So you see a lot of detail. And then I, yeah, there, this, uh, there's a lot of 99, 2000, 2001, a lot of stuff there, dark. And a lot, of time, a lot of times you can see the, there's a pen up, there's an upper, the pen upper, and the pen upper you, you'll see some spectral lines also. So there's a lot of stuff going on that I don't understand. You can see how it's cutting across sideways. So it's just moving up and down, all this activity. There's nothing boring about it, at least to me. And there's, uh, and the sun is doing that, all kinds of stuff going on. The time with it. And when you don't think anything's going on, uh, usually uh, you, you could look at it, and usually something will be happening. But the sunspot, it's, it's just uh, really exciting. So let's see, I guess I could go on to the next one here so we can see that. Okay, an H and K lines. 
So here we are, sun spot down the line. You can see the hot area in there. You'll see a little change in this. But they have what they call, uh, if you look at a profile chart, I have some up here. It's spread way out, and you can see how dark it gets out in, out in this area and out over, and out over on the other side also. But they're, it's hard to tell. They're, they both look the same. They both behave the same. But that's ancient Canaan. I'll go ahead and go on to the next one. But you can see what it's doing now. You see a difference. How it's flashing. Almost like the lightning last night. I video <laughs> But to me, this is not like a lot. It's so dynamic. Okay, we'll go on to this one. Okay, you'll see some promises. Well, you know, this, 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 this is a, uh, a prominence. And then part of the spectrum of the sun is that, that washed out area. This area here, that's just kind of ambient light. You see it got. This is a large, a fairly large prominence, and we'll get to it eventually. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting through sections of it. So it looks like there's different layers, but I'm actually moving the sun and it's seeing different heights, different positions. So it, it almost looks like a flame sometimes, depending on the, the style of it. I'll, I'll put it, it'll go into the nodding mirror part, and then you'll see what, I, what we're looking at. I kind of got angry with myself when I was watching this and I was saying, hurry up, do something different. See, but you're seeing for the first time, so maybe I might be the way to do it. It's kind of kicking myself, you know. Pardon me. It is. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Okay, I close the exit slip, and it'll start vibrating. You'll see. You'll see what happens. Gotta get it. So, see what happens? See, this kind of tells you what, how the nodding mirror system works, what it does, what it allows you to see, and what, what you're looking at. There was another prominence on there that was a little smaller, and I think I got that. And I also uh, changed the, the gain on the camera so you could see a little bit of the disk of the sun. But what's fun is you can control the bandwidth just by turning the moving that hydrogen alpha line. You could tune it on band, off band. You saw some of the disk of the sun when I, I tuned it a little differently. When I changed, now there's the other one on the other side. So if you, when you have the spectrum, just the spectrum showing with the hydrogen alpha line, if you move the disk of the sun around and you go by a prominence, you'll see it off the end of the, off the end of the hydrogen alpha line, like it's going into space. We'll see what happens. We'll go on to the next one. Let me get through something. Well, I don't know if that's an artifact. We'll go to the next one. This will be the H alpha line at first order. So it looks a little dark, but you can see. Right there, where it's hot. 
the absorption. With without a sense, Bob, you don't even see the line there. It's not visible. I don't forget the reason for it. You don't see that. I thought that was kind of neat. So I spent time imaging that. You can see how it's affecting the these lines here. It's making it get wider. But that's you can tell it's a strong magnetic field. If I were down in the green now at this point, it's the line that I like to see, you would see this thing split for sure. That's a very rare sign. At least, I guess it is. For me, it was. So, I'm going to keep you on a little bit. Okay, let's go on again. Look, okay, this is how you do it on the limb of the sun. I showed you one with this one. Okay. That's how helium looks on the limb of the sun. And it's hard to get that sun on the limb of the sun if you don't have a system. Okay. All right. Here's places it's been. Quite a few. I didn't even put the solar flash down here. This is up here. You can see. This is Riverside Telescope Makers. Uh, a lot of you probably have, have you been. How many have been to Riverside? It's on the West Coast. That's one of the big ones. I took this. There are over 11 years in a row after I got the water for it that I felt obligated to take it. I've never looked through another one yet. So I was invited to go to uh, Arizona, Flagstaff, where I, had, I met a Dr. Knighty, is his name, and this is uh, Bill Kelly here. And we, a friend of mine went with me, and Jim Lewis is his name, and we stayed at this home. Nice person he was. He and his wife treated us really well. So, Red Rock State Park in Arizona, so there. This is at the Hale Solar Lab, Pasadena, that's Don Nicholson, a friend of Dante, that's me. This is Shirley Bonas, that's her father. There are other people there. It was really hot and humid, just look at this here. This is the Hale Solar Lab in Pasadena. So, in that area, and this is a Historical place now, and it was owned by somebody that was related to him, yeah, and now it's not. I don't know if they could even go there anymore. This is Norm K. Remember, I asked, do you remember that garage with George Lake Hales? So, Spitter Haley still was set up. This is a garage, but the doors have been changed a little bit. The whole is in there. So, there's a little history. This is a friend of mine, uh, Blake Bartosh. He set up the visit down here. So Don Eccleson took me on a, took me on a tour of Mount Wilson. We went down in the, the basement of the Thunder Ditch and saw some of the lockers that the uh, astronomers used. It, was, uh, it opens up a lot of doors, a lot of opportunity. This is uh, Mount Wilson, and Larry Webster, this gentleman here, was the head solar observer. And uh, Don wanted him to see it. Larry is busy all the time. He'd climb up here, move the ceiling stair around to the afternoon. And so I had this old Dunning and Dodge pickup, and I showed him parts of it. Eventually he came to Riverside and he looked through it. He had a good time. My wife and I went there years ago, and heard this commotion going on at the bottom of the solar thing. I knew somebody was in there, and I rattled the gate a little bit. Now he walks. I didn't know. If, and he invited us in, so he showed me down inside the where the imaging is done. So, and I drew on the on the board the uh, plan that I had for this particular telescope. These are Anderson prisms. This is was used on the Snow Telescope at Mount Wilson. And you can see they're not very big. That's the way Webster's hand right there. They're probably not more than a a half inch or maybe a, a little less, even. They're elongated. And these things, I guess, are just to keep you from bumping into it. But there's one here and one over here. That's another way of synthesizing the sun on the entrance slip. Instead of an eye here, you can shine a light through the prism. The prism has to spin while sweeping across the entrance slip. There's other ways of doing it, too. Fred Vio has written, I brought one of his books. 
that he gave me. He and I have become really good friends, Joe Perry. <laughs> Brought me over. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Joe. He offered to bring me. This is at the Golden State Star Party in California. So I, you could see the sea clamps and stuff. So I was experimenting with the sealess system. It's at a plateau about 4,000 feet high in the northeast part of California. Cattle Ranch. The skies are just unbelievable. You know where you are? <laughs> this is the solar vest. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay. Jim Kissy, who was born in 1910, he gave me one of those tools. And so I bought another one. That I've never changed. My wife's been a wonderful man. And my wife painted the sun on the bell. So that's it. Thank you.